I, this is very easy to to explain you. Of course, this was very important, and um, it's great that this generated some discussion, no, between the the, the press like this, some gossip. But this was very important uh, to clarify. Uh, that is because there was the presence of the name Luca Turilli on top of the logo for the new band and this was uh, just because uh, to avoid the legal problems that we had in the past I couldn't have not used Rhapsody alone but uh, I had to have this uh, my name in little to be able no, to go on like that uh, and so for the people because of the same presence of my name to not let them think that this will be ascending to infinity will be like uh, a fourth uh, Luca Turilli solo album so it was a kind of way to have uh, the people speaking about and to let them understand comp that this is just a, a new Rhapsody album then now the people can say it is the number one number two but for me the important uh, for the record company Nuclear Blast was important to clarify this so now I don't care it can be you can call it like you want no but it was important to say because I didn't compose this album like I composed the solo albums. This I composed like I composed all the other reps of the album in these last uh, 15 years. No, 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 for me it was essential that is Italian because. <laughs> sorry, I'm a mosquito of the. a Hellfest mosquito. Um, it was important because uh, for me one of the basic elements uh, of, of my composition uh, really now it became the writing of lyrics in Italian no so as I like to express myself in Italian uh, uh, then uh, to have uh, an Italian singer is fundamental of course no it would be strange to have a <laughs> singer an American singer <laughs> that I like uh, singing in Italian so um, Yes, this is the basic thing, no? also because uh, I like this uh, operatic uh, approach, I like to insert this uh, kind of fragments for, uh, really from opera in, in, in the music of Rhapsody. Already we did it, me and Alex composing songs like Lamento Eroico in the past uh, for Fabio in Rhapsody. So um, I want to do even more now, no? uh, because I really like, I think, uh, opera uh, the, uh, very epic, sounds very epic. And so when I learned, uh, when I um, found out that Alessandro Conti, uh, it's not uh, only great on the higher ranges, uh, and that really reminds me the Kiske, the Mikhail Kiske of the best uh, of the best times, the Keeper uh, One and Keeper Two. But I also found that it's very powerful, and this is very unusual. No, a singer is so good there that is so powerful in the lower ranges, and this is because he studied uh, lyrical singing in the same school of Pavarotti for many years. So this was just uh, when I, I I knew about that, I thought, ah no, then uh, Alessandro, you are my singer. Yeah, really. Uh, some people told me that this album uh, sounds to them more connected to the very first discography of Rhapsody, no? And it was a little bit, I think, uh, to tell this, because uh, normally this is the, the basic way uh, I like to compose, to write music for. I was inspired completely creating Rhapsody, me and Alex at that time, uh, by really the two keepers of Halloween, no? So this kind of sing along, very high, very... Uh, so just the idea to add to this kind of very high-toned uh, melodies, this orchestration under, no, there was this a little bit, the, the, the basic idea behind Rhapsody. So we started composing Legendary Tales and the first symphony album more in this direction, no? Then we change because uh, you change in the years like this. But now that I start this new, uh, new adventure under the name Rhapsody, it's really a little bit to underline that, no? To come back to this first uh, passion and having uh, found a singer like I Alessandro really allowed me to do that, no? And so, um, because I, I really feel my blood, this kind of sing along, no? Uh, when I think to songs uh, sung by Kiske, like uh, Twilight of the Gods or March of Time that we made the cover now, it really gives me the feeling of other dimensions. It's really like a flight, you know? And I always uh, like to have that in my music too. I cannot tell you nothing because I, I didn't listen anything from his new band uh, Unisonic because uh, I'm here making promo. I just heard something like that, but uh, I never heard the new Kiske. So the new what he's doing now, no? Yes. 
No, it's already fantastic to do something at least. <laughs> uh, so it's better than nothing, but uh, I love to make promo because I like to promote this new album, of course. But uh, I can tell you next year we will be here for sure. Playing, <laughs> of course. <laughs> This is the word that uh, I always wanted to use because cinematic for me was always uh, the music of Rhapsody. Now that I had the possibility to go on alone with the support of Nuclear Blast, like this, they give me total freedom uh, with my ideas, which shows really the word cinematic because uh, it's the same word that I already proposed seven years ago to the second record company that wanted to change from this Hollywood metal that for them didn't really represent what we wanted to, to mean no, because for them Hollywood metal was meaning more something like uh, Motley Crue this kind more than what we think in the, so something related to the world of cinema to the world of the soundtracks and all that no? but now uh, I could use this word and I love to use this word because uh, Cinema for me is the word. Cinema is the international word. You can understand it. Me, I can understand it in Italy. It's the English is the same. So I would have liked to use it since a lot, but now I can finally use it. And of course, cinematic meta means everything because the word cinema is the heart, at the, the heart of the composition of this music. Uh, I, I started, we started with Alex uh, in 1993. Uh, no, in 1993, to be honest, we were more inspired by classical music. We were coming from Ingrid Malmsteen, from Halloween, like this. Uh, so, more this guy. But then, in the 95, I discovered uh, this album. Um, it was the soundtrack of Batman, uh, the movie of Tim Burton. The music was uh, written by Danny Elfman. And I, I, I but this is even better than classical music, no? And then I proposed to, um, to Alex, why we don't write, uh, we don't include this music in our... So we were sending in that moment the demos uh, to have enough songs to come out with our first albums that then it was a legendary taste in 1907 in 1997 and so we proposed to our record company we sent this new demo filled with this uh, orche new orchestral style you know so we were making intros outros adding and we were afraid because maybe our first company could have thought uh, ah no this is difficult music this is too much progressive like this but no in the end they were totally excited the Lim Schnorr of LMP that was also the manager of Halloween at the time, no? He was the one who discovered them, also discovered Angra uh, he discovered also Rhapsody and so he told that, yes, this is the new music, uh, I will promote it as Hollywood metal, he felt it was something new, let's say, this combination between soundtrack music and the world of heavy metal uh, in the uh, typical power metal of bands like Halloween, so um, he felt, uh, so already at the time cinema was everything, was the the fire, the engine of the Rhapsody. Um, uh, in the same way, after 20 years, I can tell you the passion is still the same. Cinema, cinema, cinema. I go to see from Transformer, Avenger, Battleship, these great big budget movies to the more intimate movies. I love everything. If there is a great story, if there are great special effects, doesn't matter. I love cinema. And the same uh, emotions that I have when I see these big movies, these soundtracks, these. Uh, these narrations in the trailers, no? for example, for these movies, I want to transmit back uh, with the music of Rhapsody. Uh, this was uh, something that was already proposed to me in these uh, years. Uh, I had two chances. In 2006, I had to meet really some important people to work in this business. Uh, one year ago, when still uh, we, we, and, uh, we were knowing that we would have proceeded to the split, so we knew that uh, we would have announced the split, but still I didn't know if I would have went on as a Rhapsody or I would have done something different. And there was again this possibility to make a company for trailer music, all that, no? But uh, in the end, I always said no in the last five minutes because um, I was afraid to renounce to the freedom that actually I'm having with Rhapsody. Because you don't know, my friend, but with uh, Nuclear Blast, I am the most free artist in this world, uh, in the sense that they totally trust in me, for example, before I give them the master of this album, they didn't know anything about the music, they totally trust in me, so when you already work with all this freedom, when you are at your home, and you, you can just, the limit is your fantasy, I mean, why to risk to go to work in another direction, uh, also abandoning your fans, because we have this 
very big, strong uh, fan base, Rhapsody, you know? um, uh, especially because of this positive message that we always gave, people able to solve their problems, their daily problems, thanks to our music. You cannot imagine what kind of letters we receive from the fans. So, in the end, I put everything on the table, and I told why to risk to lose this freedom, because, you know, uh, in many cases, you work, yes, with big budgets, big movies like this, if you have uh, the chance, but uh, also the, the famous composers, they had to deal really with the famous directors, and so you know stories about also Titanic, big movies where really the composer had to suffer to impose his music to the director, because there, are the vi there is the vision of the producer, there is the vision of the director, and more money there is on the table, more you have to deal with compromise. And so at this point of my life, I fought two times, I think two times, before uh, changing uh, the situation. Now creating the two different bands, no, no, now, now I cannot tell you what Rhapsody of Fire will be about, you no, know? because when I was working with Alex, I was writing the saga, everything was musically and lyrical related. Now we announced the end of the saga, and that's why the split came just after, no? We really wanted to finish this artistic cycle. Uh, we worked these 15 years together, this was important, but now uh, it's like to start something new. Me, I presented now what is my idea for the new Rhapsody. Now, I'm also me curious what uh, Rhapsody of Fire will be about. I don't have any idea what Alex will, will compose without me. So, uh, me now, I know really what this is what I want to bring onwards. Always cinema, 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 no? Now, um, we wait for Rhapsody of Fire, what uh, they will bring out. Uh, but I think knowing myself, knowing uh, Alex and Fabio, they will make for sure a great work. And uh, But I know that um, uh, being uh, artistically also with different tastes, we come from different roots. For example, me, I was more the guy coming from Halloween. Uh, Alex and Fabio, they come more from this hard rock, American hard rock. These are the main influences. Uh, uh, so I really don't know. I, I, I'm curious too, no? But what I can tell you is that this uh, artistic difference difference for me in three four years it will justify the separation so the people will, will see that the, the, the bands are quite different enough different to justify the, the existence of two reps of the bands no 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 sorry this uh, I, then I would go to write soundtracks because uh, no I say in the same way that I would not write soundtracks only soundtracks because I miss the heavy metal because what I like is really the connection between the soundtracks and the heavy metal uh, I miss, otherwise I miss the impact of the guitar um, if I write only soundtracks, uh, only soundtrack with or only orchestrations you know? um, if I would play in the same way just the normal like many bands, uh, just guitar, bass and drums I would not play heavy metal the connection, yes. I, I, anyway, there is no limits for this because right now that I'm thinking already about the music of the second album and the now, especially that there is not a saga to respect a fantasy saga like this. In, in every song, I can write about everything. In every album, I can speak about everything. The limits is just your fantasy. So there are not problems of uh, to to be to offer varied. Uh, a lot of variety in the next albums, no? Absolutely, I can really compose whatever pass in my, in my heart and um, uh, touch my soul in some way, so there is no... But I, I really would feel totally limited if I would have just four instruments. I should write the music for four or five instruments. The end and the enemy at the same time, of course, no? It's the double side. Uh, it was great to see that uh, the video of Dark Fate of Atlantis in a few weeks reached 160,000 people uh, just by spreading words, no? So uh, really this is the power of internet, no? Without promo like this, suddenly one person speaking to the other, sharing with the other like this, and then you see the, the curiosity about this new Rhapsody band, this is fantastic. And of course it helps a lot, it helps uh, to have a Facebook page, I never have, me I don't have a personal Facebook page, no? I, I don't like to have it and that's it. But now, 
for Epsody, for my band, we opened this Facebook page because also speaking with the record company, we found it that uh, is really essential nowadays to have it. So in some way, internet is essential for a band. Then, of course, the problem of the download. Uh, is a big problem, but now our, uh, we have uh, we found a solution also in this sense, and this is the first time that my album is not uh, leaked uh, on uh, on uh, online uh, when it's missing just one week before of the release, and this is amazing. There are some uh, uh, solutions you can find to avoid this, and this time, for example, it worked. I remember the Frozen Tears of Angels or From Chaos to Eternity. It was already online, spreading to, for everybody like one month before, but now. Now, I mean, slowly you learn to know internet, you learn to, um, to find solution. I mean, there are also some people that then had to pay because of that, no? They had to be sued by the record company because record, some people don't understand you make lose money to a lot of uh, people making like this. You, waste, you ruin the band because then, of course... If you put the album on the net, then you lose the investment, you lose uh, everything. The, the record company pays less the artist, the budget becomes less and less, the, you can offer less quality and so on. It's a kind of chain reaction, no? But um, it happened already that these people that put our albums on the net, uh, they, they were prosecuted legally, no? And, uh, and so or they were fired from their jobs uh, or whatever because of this because this is, sometimes the people don't realize that this is something legally very important no? Uh, sometimes they think oh, they share with the friends but it's not about that it's something really worth of uh, legal lawsuits no? legal lawsuits um, so, but at the same time, most of the record company they are finding new strategies to avoid that. And for example, we applied one of these strategies to this new album, and they really work well. Then, of course, when the album is out, then it can spread. It's also promotion in some way for other people that, in any case, will not will never buy the album. We are lucky with Rhapsody because, in some way, we have, a, as I told you before, a, a strong fan base, and the people who love Rhapsody love to have the real thing in the end. So so that's why we spend a lot of money. We lost uh, always with Alex. We did it. Now I do. We invest a lot to have special booklets, very rich, uh, full of graphical elements. In the way that uh, a fan of Rhapsody really has the the great thing in his hands, no? Because. Um, Maybe I'm old school, I don't know what, but still I love when uh, I buy an album of a band to have the booklet in my hand to follow the lyrics li while listening to this music. And I know there are many people respecting us, respecting many other bands, and doing that, no? Uh, I know Thomas of Night is, is saying the same things I'm saying now, no? He's uh, also like, uh, we, we don't understand uh, how the people can really listen to one of these songs just uh, on the iPod like this, not even leaving the, the feeling, the pathos, the atmosphere of reading the lyrics on a booklet while following the music, no? This is, uh, maybe we are really old, <laughs> we are the Flintstones, uh, uh, but... Uh, I really, this is an emotion that we don't like to miss, no? So we, me personally, I, maybe I discover one band on YouTube, or on iTunes, but then I buy the album, of course. So this is the satisfaction, I buy the album. If I buy from iTunes, then I want the digital booklet, of course, no? Uh, I'm uh, probably old school, but it works like this for many artists, many are we, many bands, uh, we think it in the same way. It's just a matter of learn uh, about the uh, internet, how to use it uh, in our advantage and to offer good quality to the people. It also, I mean, it's important, things like iTunes, Amazon, they give the possibility already for the people to listen. I, I mean, iTunes offers 90 seconds of music. I mean, you understand that if an album listening 90 music multiplied for 10 songs is uh, five, six minutes for each album, you know if it's worth the investment. Echo. Uh, also, I don't, me for, for example, I don't like to buy just one song. Like 99 cents, you buy one song. I mean, you can discover after many listening that you like another song. That maybe in the snippet, in the preview, you, you, you didn't like, or maybe it was not the part of the song that you could have liked more, no? You buy the whole album, it's 9 euro nowadays, I mean, it's worth the band, it's, it's worth the work of a band that worked for one year to give you the best.
no. Now, now we don't make any more music for um, for money, no. Usually, for example, w with Rhapsody, uh, luckily me and Dialects, we never put the money as first importance. Uh, uh, you will see that the first time we have a very big budget, and this was with the Symphony of Incent Lens Part 2 album, we invested all the money to have Christopher Lee as a narrator and the real orchestra, because this was uh, one artistic dream. So we always put art as priority. So now it's not a problem for us if there is not that much money anymore, the, like this. For example, I also put my personal money on top of the record company to offer the best quality, you know, for the people in this. For this album, I didn't look at the at the money. Like this I just wanted to have this, that, a hell of choirs. I have like 90 tracks just for the songs uh, of Michael the Archangel of Lucifer Fall. Only almost 100 tracks of choirs, of opera choirs, epic choirs. So I really didn't look at the at the money, you know. I just spend whatever just to ensure the typical reps the quality and this is really appreciated by our fans so it's not so much frustra frustrating for us because we know that uh, most of the people buy our albums and maybe the people that don't buy because they don't know the band like this then they discover us through maybe YouTube whatever but then they come to see us at the shows and this is an, impo an important thing no? many people can also discover you thanks to the internet and then they want to see to come to see you at your uh, show so in some way they help you then buying the ticket of the show but of course the bands need the, 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 the affection of the fans because of course then if you reach a limit that there is no money at all then of course you cannot even release albums anymore and I think many bands that have not the chance like Rhapsody to have a good budget still after many years despite the situation of the market then they have they are constricted to close uh, really to to change job so the most most of them they are constricted to have a second job uh, so they you know but for example in this festival with in temptation with the with in temptation is one of these bands that i really like and that uh, all the other bands now for example in this festival here i don't know so much me i'm not a, a rocker so Ozzy Osmore, Motley Crue or Guns N' Roses is not really my stuff or Leonard Skinner is not really my stuff i more i can more up with this uh, european heavy metal so i'm more for halloween with temptation the, the old halloween and music echo me, me, I like more this. I like more Nightwish, I like more uh, this kind of bands. The tour, of course, the tour. Expect us uh, in November, in December, in France for many days. It will be a great tour full of visual surprises because we are working with the same guy who made the video for us, this uh, Ove Lingval. We are preparing a lot of visual surprises because we want to present also something uh, more spectacular than just the band playing uh, on stage uh, the old hits. Uh, there will be also um, a lot of variety in, our, in the choice of the songs. So um, expect uh, songs from the new album, but also songs from the very first albums because as the vocal was, were composed very high, then they fit really well with the voice of Alessandro. I also expect a couple of surprises from my solo albums because as I stop the solo activity as Luca Turilli because now I can compose everything with Rhapsody, um, then uh, there was no other chance for me to play those uh, songs that were always very requested from the fans all around the world to be played on stage. So finally we can offer also a couple of surprises from my solo albums. So really big surprises.